oxidative stress is generally thought of as a, a problem in our, in our bodies and, and in life when you hear the term used. But in reality, we're always experiencing oxidative stress and the body knows what to do about it. The trouble comes when there's too much of an outside influence creating a burden or the body is having a, def a deficiency in its ability to do the repair work, one or the other. And either one of those is really no good. So the object is, is to figure out how to balance out this equation. Oxidative stress is also kind of best described as just simply a rusting process that our body experience. So we're, we're constantly rusting, but we're doing repair work and dealing with it. And um, even when we just consume food and burn it for fuel, we create waste and that waste is an oxidative stress experience. So that's, you can just think of oxidative stress as our body's um, capacity to deal with the rusting process that happens to all of us. So rusting or aging in a way is sort of natural, but we want to stay in balance. And there's some things that we can do to help out. If we exercise, eat properly, get our rest, and balance our emotional and intellectual life uh, so that we experience joy, those four things will kind of help you deal with oxidative stress. The trouble is, in our day-to-day -day industrialized lives, we don't always see that possible. We work crazy hours. We might have a night shift job. Um, we may need to travel a lot. We, we, we just may not be able to eat the right foods at the right times. And so it becomes a challenge. So many people will seek out technologies to kind of help out. If you think about um, nutrition, what, what we think a lot of times that as we green up our diet, we're helping out with oxidative stress. And there is truth to that. But nutrients alone may not help out because some folks genetically are prone to having more challenges with oxidative stress. It's just in our DNA. If you think about it, there's uh, maybe one of your family tree lines where there's early wrinkles and early graying of hair and hardening of the arteries and um, people are experiencing high blood pressure and uh, maybe, um, maybe some coronary artery disease, heart problems, and maybe even strokes in the family tree. Your genetics is telling you that you're susceptible to the rusting process. So um, as we um, improve the quality of our diet by plenty of, making plenty of water, um, and greening up our diet, that helps. But just simply doing that isn't necessarily going to make a big difference. And that's a frustration people experience. So what do you do about that? The answer is probably best found in supplementing our body with certain little molecules that can help out. There are redox molecules that our body normally makes an abundance of. And sometimes we don't for a variety of reasons. And if we're short or out of balance there, uh, it does help to supplement those redox molecules. These molecules help our natural antioxidants to work better. Our natural antioxidants are glutathione and superoxide dismutase. These are antioxidants you cannot supplement, really. You can eat greener foods and, and more balanced foods to help you maybe manufacture some more of these and upregulate their production, but it won't really help the efficiency of those antioxidants. So to give those little antioxidants some raw material to really do their work, it's wonderful. So when our antioxidants are needing to uh, take out a, a toxin that is related to a toxic buildup of something from oxidative stress or a free radical, this is definitely related to oxidative stress imbalances, the antioxidant molecules can, can try to take those guys out but they need um, a, a charged particle, a redox molecule to help to neutralize those toxins. And so when they have them available, oh my gosh, the changes in, in, in dealing with oxidative stress are remarkable. Let's talk about exercise. When we exercise, where our muscles are burning fuel and um, we need energy to do that um, in the form of 
of ATP that comes from food that we consume. And then in our little mitochondria and our muscles, they create energy so our muscles can contract and do the work of exercise. This is all good. We were built to exercise. We feel better when we exercise. And all that works well as long as you can recover from that exercise journey. If you're not recovering well, then you're going to break down. Kind of like a horse that runs too many races. They get shin splints and sore joints and all this stuff. And, and they just, you know, they've been overworked. So um, we can do the same thing. So in, in that situation, um, what the things that athletes find that help them is, is again, to get plenty of rest to uh, get plenty of sleep, to eat right. And um, today we know that when we provide a resource of those kinds of molecules that help the body do, do the recovery work, we see a huge change in the recovery process. Those little molecules are called redox molecules and we can supplement them. If we do adequately, our body will not turn its um, turn course and shift from aerobic metabolism into anaerobic metabolism. And we stay in that aerobic phase and we don't create as much oxidative waste. We burn fuel in an efficient manner instead of an inefficient manner. Sleep is probably the most important thing we do to assist our body with health. It is precious. Uh, we take it for granted when it's good, but if it's not good, then we have real challenges. There are cycles that we travel through. There are hormones we produce as we sleep. And when these are all in, a, in that natural rhythm, uh, it's, it's wonderful. So it can get off course when we experience a lot of oxidative stress. And the reason has to do with the mismatches in, in metabolism that lead to shifts in our hormones in our body. So um, the stress hormones are the major ones. So when we're under stress, um, either physically or emotionally, our body produces extra stress hormones. It's just by nature. And so we produce extra cortisol, which is from the adrenal glands and the norepinephrine and epinephrine, which also come from the adrenals. It's the survival hormones that help us adapt and adjust. Okay. It's fine when we have an episode of stress, but when this becomes a, a constant drip, drip every day, dealing with traffic, fighting this, dealing with that, um, or if we're not able to exercise or nourish ourselves well, the, the body doesn't have a sense of humor. These, these cues are taken literally. So our survival mechanisms kick in. There are certain genes that switch on or off. And all of a sudden, we're in that fight or flight mode. And we don't rest well. It can get to a point where we're tired and wired and we, we just can't function right. We feel sleepy, but we just can't. And then we get to the point where we're just exhausted. And that's really, really a severe case of, of adrenal efficiency. So what can we do to help? Well, unless you adjust those lifestyle issues, this can be a downward spiral. Uh, again, there are some things that can be done nutritionally, but mostly uh, this is so foundational in our health that unless we restore some of the basic and essential molecular balances that are required for good sleep and um, turning off some of those switches that accelerate the adrenal response, we're in trouble. Supplementing redox molecules is, is pivotal here. And probably um, it, it is probably the most fascinating thing I've seen in my career uh, in medicine to notice how gently the body accepts these molecular resources, puts them to work and allows the body to gently and, and safely uh, sleep in a balanced manner.